Welcome back to Morningstar Cafe. I'm Al Williams, and I'm here with Kathy Caruso, who is the author of Defeating Autism. It's good to have you here, Kathy. Thank you very much. Now, we, we were talking before we uh, started taping. We, we kind of have um, similar stories. As I, I have children with uh, autism. Tell me what inspired you to write, to write the book. I wanted to help people. I, I really felt like it was a call from God to start putting the pen to paper 10 years ago um, to help people navigate the waters of autism and also to build an army, so to speak, within the body of Christ that will come against disabilities and ask the Lord to pull them down and bring healing and bring deliverance and bring all the things that our kids need. Now, as far as autism goes, not just in the uh, Christian community, but in, in um, the community overall, um, up until a while ago, people didn't even really understand what it was. Right. And I, they still don't. I, and they still don't. I remember in 2007 reading that one in 88 uh, was the number. And, I, and from what I've heard, that number has now climbed quite a bit. It, it's almost doubled in that time. Um, so it's, this is very timely uh, for people who just don't understand. Um, tell me a little bit about your son and what you've, uh, and, and the journey that, that... Uh, Nicholas was developing typically until about the time he was 18 months old. Mm -hmm. He was brilliant. He was speaking, he was reading, he was finishing. I would read a line in a book, he would finish, he would answer questions. Um, and then we started to see that his gross motor skills and his fine motor skills were decreasing. He was tantruming. He never was a good sleeper, so he really wasn't sleeping a lot. Um, he wasn't making eye contact anymore. We started to see a lot of the, the self-stimulatory behaviors, looking at his hands and just being very um, self-directed. And we went to the pediatrician at that time who, you know, back then autism wasn't a word. It wasn't, you know, this wide spectrum that it is now. It was a bigger mystery then. And he basically told me, he did tell me, that he Nicholas was spoiled and combative, that I was a stay-at-home mother and that I was his at his beck and call and he was tantruming because he was behavioral and spoiled. And as time has gone on, the medical world, the, the scientific community is kind of catching up to where we all were with, uh, with this 20 years ago. 15 years ago, and there's just so much um, to raising a child who's dealing with this this condition. Yes. Yeah. Um, tell, tell me a little bit about what it's been like, uh, and, and, and not to give the whole book away, but, but uh, tell us what it's been like raising your son, who's a little different than everybody, and what kind of support did you get from the communities, the, uh, the school? Um, Nick is 21 and a half. So like I said, you know, back then it wasn't in the forefront. It wasn't, you know, a household word. Autism wasn't a household word. Um, it was very difficult and it takes on different levels of difficulty. Watching your child not develop the right way, not reaching uh, typical milestones, not doing the things that that you want to see so bad and watching them suffer yeah. with the lack of ability to communicate the lack of normalcy of life struggling for every bit of joy you can get nicholas's disposition was always sunny and happy mm -hmm. other than the times of the meltdowns and the tantrums that that are prevalent in autism mm -hmm. because these individuals can't communicate the way that they want or sometimes their sensory functions are are out of line. You and I see a fluorescent light. They mm -hmm. may see something totally different. They may hear the frequency mm -hmm. from that light. Yeah. And all those things go into making chaos yes. in their systems. Something as simple as taking a bath can be terrifying. Exactly. Hair combing. Yep. We cover that in the book, uh, getting haircuts, going to the dentist, things that typical families take for granted mm -hmm. are a real struggle for a special needs family. They are. They Just the simple things in life 
that we take, uh, like you said, we take for granted. I know that um, my wife, when all this was happening with Isaiah, our, our uh, second son, uh, she started, you know, questioning herself. Did I do something I shouldn't have done? You know, when, when I was when I was carrying him, was is there something? Is that is some of this my fault? And that's that that's another common thing that happens. Absolutely, we take it on. The first place we look is to ourselves. What did I do wrong? What you know? And then theories came out. Well, the mother ingested too much tuna fish, so there was too so there's too much mercury. So the mother that did this, or the mother was depressed, or the father, and mm -hmm. nothing proven, nothing gained. Yep. Uh, God bless scientists and, and theorists who are out there looking and digging, but really at the end of the day, they don't have anything. No, they don't. I've been around a long time, and I've seen every theory and every possible cause, but they haven't nailed it down yet. But there is one who knows everything. Yes. And that's the one I chose. He's the one. Jesus Christ is the one I chose to put my faith in because he can navigate us and he can navigate your family and every family out there because he knows the intricacies and all the details that went to make this thing up and what, what will heal and cure and bring restoration in, in families. And, and we have to believe that there's a reason for everything. Absolutely. We, we're all given challenges. Some are greater than others. Yes. Yes. Um, and, and, you know, you, some of these children, you see them, you know, they, they don't know that they have, that they're different than anybody else, especially when they're five, six, seven years old. Um, right. We're, we, you know, we, when they're younger, we, we tend to, um, like, feel the hurt for them, the, uh, the worry for them. It never stops. It, it doesn't. One mother described it best. She said it's a continual grief. You grieve the holidays. You grieve birthdays. You grieve normalcy. Mm -hmm. And you grieve for yourself as a mother. But first you grieve for them mm -hmm. of what they're missing out. Yep. And that's where your trust in God has to be first. Because he goes before us. And I've placed Nick in his hands. And he's in charge. Sickness and disease did not come from God. Let's tear down a lie right now. God did not make special kids and give them to special people. God hates disease yeah. and disorder. God yeah. dealt with disease and disorder at the cross. It's up to us to take that stand and take him at his word and fight. That's why there's a sword on the cover of this book. The sword represents the word of God. And if we go after this thing with the word of God, we will see breakthrough. We will see it come down. We will see God move in our situation. We will. Now, if somebody wants to get a copy of your book, how do they go about doing it? Uh, it's on Amazon. And I'm also going to do a book release and signing at my local church, Redeemer Church, 931 Herkimer Road, on the 23rd and the 24th of January. Now, um... If you were to get this on Amazon, how much how much is it costing? I think Amazon put it out for eighteen ninety nine. Okay. Uh, the publisher suggested a price of twenty dollars um, because it is a hundred and seventy some odd pages and it has thirty color photos. I didn't set the price; they did. Okay. Um, and uh, one more question: um, How, if somebody wanted to get in touch with you, would they do that? Uh, there is an email address in the back of the book. It's Kathy Jo Caruso at gmail.com. Okay. All right. Well, Kathy, it's been great talking to you. Thank you for having me. Great having me. you on the show. Thank you. Mm -hmm.